billionaires get a bad name in the Bay Area, but one is donating big money. We're talking $2 million this time to try to save downtown San Francisco. Joining us live now is Chris Larson, co-founder and executive chairman of the blockchain-based payments firm Ripple. Chris, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Kristen. Great to be here. You're a serial entrepreneur who invested in crypto. Your net worth is in the billions. You are on the Forbes list of the wealthiest individuals. We won't say where because that changes all the time. Now, that's the financial intro, but how would you like to be introduced? Well, yeah, I'm the exec chair of Ripple. We have a great team that's running the, the company day to day, and we're really proud of them. Um, but I actually spend most of my time now on philanthropic efforts. Um, climate change is, is uh, probably takes most of my time. But we're really focused on trying to help San Francisco uh, both recover and, and, and just improve from the fantastic place that it is. Uh, and it's actually a lot of fun to be doing that because we have a lot of challenges, but they're all, they're all very fixable. And uh, you know we're really honored to be able to help where we can. You have donated many rounds to causes in San Francisco. Why are you so committed to the city in particular? Well, you know, I was born here. <laughs> this is where my parents met. Uh, went to you know SF State. Um, you know, paid a hundred dollars a semester when I went there. What bargain of the century? I know it's a little more expensive, still the bargain of the century. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, we love this place, and uh, absolutely convinced it's the best place uh, on the planet. It's the most innovative place, the most accepting place. Uh, always has been, always will be, and uh, you know this is where we want to be. Yeah, best place on the planet. Going through some challenges currently and I know you're trying sure. to make an impact there right so let's talk about your latest commitment the two million dollars I understand it will go to about 50 organizations to uh, improve retail but in different ways talk about that yeah so you know we, we obviously noted that during the pandemic uh, you know small businesses probably suffered the most mm -hmm. and that's a huge category of uh, San Franciscans uh, and, and our work I think it's a like hundred thousand people uh, work in small businesses and they really got hurt so we tried to find ways to help that and kind of stumbled across uh, something I didn't realize but there's actually 34 merchant districts in San Francisco uh, it's it's really a, a huge community and what's powerful about that is that, you know, this is a very diverse city. Uh, it's got so many interesting things that, you know, even being here my whole life, I didn't realize. And these merchant districts, they know exactly what they need in their neighborhoods and in their mini downtowns uh, to help improve things. So the idea here was simply empowering them with resources, but let them decide mm -hmm. what they need. It was that lighting, was that signage, was that safety, cleanliness, whatever it might be. You know, we find that sort of hyper local approach mm -hmm. uh, is going to get the best uh, bang for the buck. Union Square has gotten a lot of attention with some of the anchor stores leaving Nordstrom, you know, on Market Street, and also Mission District has gotten some attention. But talk about where you think uh, the need is greatest. Which shopping districts are you most focused on? Yeah, well, I'm going to give you a little, maybe more of a complicated answer on that one, because I do believe uh, we do have to protect Union Square. It's not just sort of a, a pretty place to buy, you know, handbags, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's the lifeblood of, you know, kind of the tourist industry. It is a huge driver of revenue that then supports home, homeless services and you name it, right? So we do have to protect that, uh, the head of that. And I'll just give a little plug to Marissa Rod Rodriguez, who runs the uh, uh, Union Square Association, uh, they need all the help they can get. So we do have to protect that really as a lifeblood of the city. That said, though, we've got these incredible merchant districts all over the city, Hayes Valley, you know, Fisherman's Wharf, uh, Balboa, you know, uh, Glen Park. Um, it, it is really a diverse, rich, uh, you know, gem that we've, we've got, and we've, we've got to protect them. And I tell you, those small businesses, they just, you know, they're so vulnerable and they have been so strong through this unprecedented, you know, multiple years of setbacks uh, and challenges with public safety, you name it. And they're hanging in there. So we really got to be proud of them. So again, kind of anything I think we can do mm -hmm. uh, to help them is really important. And by the way, one of the things we're trying to do with, with this effort is encourage other uh, businesses, leaders, people that have resources to contribute there. I think it's one of the best channels because it's super efficient um, they know what to do and they make the most of the resources that, that mm -hmm. they get. So 
we, we love this channel of going right to the small uh, business districts. I know previously you had given money for security cameras. Uh, you talked about lighting, and I know these different groups that you gave money to do, do th different things. Uh, but security and safety aside, are there efforts through some of these grants to make it fun, to bring back events and things that will really draw people? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I think that's actually most uh, of what these projects are, because that's what the needs are, right? So lighting, for example, it turns out just stringing some lights in maybe a dark alley in one of these districts or in the main uh, shopping area, it brightens things up, it looks festive, uh, it actually improves safety, people love it, and it's incredibly inexpensive to do that. So we, we love those. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, some of these districts, they just are putting up signage, way, wayfinding uh, signage to show, hey, here's where you can get a cup of coffee. Here's where there's a great art store. Uh, that's really great. Um, the, the arts uh, festivals, you know, that you see on Fillmore Street, uh, that will improve uh, that this year's uh, efforts there. And just even art walks, you know, we have a lot of shut down uh, shops in some of these districts. Well, you can fill those with sort of pop up art installations, and then you have these art walks. Uh, so, so several of the programs uh, support that. And that's a great way to, you know, kind of lift up the spirits and provide sort of new innovative ways of uh, engaging with these neighborhoods. Do you feel like your efforts are being met with the full support of city government, whether it's the mayor, the supervisors, other agencies, police department? It kind of takes all those stakeholders, right? Yeah, it does for the many problems we obviously have to address. Uh, the cool thing about the, this uh, Avenue Greenlight is it's super non-political, right? So everybody loves it, right? Uh, the shopkeepers love it, uh, the board of soups loves it, the mayor loves it, the police love it. So th this one's really fun. You know, when you do when you're talking about security cameras, that's a different story. You're you're always going to have, uh, you know, people uh, who want to question how you're doing it. Yeah. Uh, but this is just sort of pure joy and goodness, and we, we that's why we love it. Well, let me just ask you, tech and, you know, tech wealth have been blamed for some of the problems, maybe even a lot of the problems that the city is going through, right? Driving up housing costs, traffic, um, indirectly creating homelessness, only to now abandon offices and leaving the downtown a ghost town. That's one of the narratives. Uh, do you agree that there's some responsibility there? There is responsibility for sure because uh, prices have gone up. Um, so uh, I think businesses do have to step up. Uh, but I think clearly a lot of the uh, kind of blame, get it, it, we spent, first of all, we spend too much time blaming each other in this city. We got to work on, on more solutions. Um, but uh, I think one of the problems has been with tech is they just haven't even engaged, right? Uh, it's sort of like, okay, I love the city. This is awesome. Uh, but, you know, all this uh, vitriol, I'm just going to stand back. We can't do that anymore. We have to engage, even if it gets, you know, unpleasant sometimes. Um, the business community, the tech community has to be there and being part of these solutions to public safety and growth and uh, criminal justice reform and you name it, right? We've got to be there. Mm -hmm. The good news is I see more and more of that. I think the community now uh, is stepping up and that's that's a positive. Yeah, from the reporting standpoint, I see more and more of that recently as well. And you just answered my last question about what do you encourage other tech leaders to do? So Chris Larson, thank you so much. Really appreciate you coming on the show. Thanks so much for having me, I appreciate it.